Hey y'all, I am James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making a panel gauge. Now if you want to follow along with us, you can because this is going to be a live video. We're going to build this completely through today. Uh, so it's going to be one long build. You get to see the, uh, the mistakes I make and the real time build. So if you want to build it in real time, here's your chance. Uh, you can download the plans for free on the website. There are links to those down below. Um, and in here you're also going to find the cut list um, as well as a hardware list for things you're going to need. So we have today a beam, which is one inch by one inch by about two feet long. Um, size really doesn't matter on that. If you want to make it longer, you make it shorter, you want to make it a different dimension, you can. That's just about what I have. Then we're also going to need a fence. I'm making mine seven inches long. Uh, my original one was about uh, nine inches long. Make it something you want. This is a little on the shorter side, but I kind of want to try doing a different, uh, different design. So it is seven inches by two and a half by one inches thick. Then we also have some hardware to put into it. This, is, um, this part is optional in that we have an eighth inch by eighth inch brass rod. Um, here, let me see if I can do this on here to so give you guys a little closer look at what I'm actually talking about. The uh, brass rod is just a wear strip that is going to go into the top of here. So when you put your screw down, it tightens onto that rather than the wood. So if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. Just understand your wood is probably going to wear up a little bit faster. You know, it might not last 200 years, it may only last 100. <laughs> then we're also going to have a brass uh, wear strip. This is a piece of half inch by half inch um, uh, corner stock. And so this is something we're going to be doing different. I didn't put that on this initial one, and you don't have to have it on there, but I like having a little bit of a lip on there, so I wish I'd put in a rabbit. So that is what that stock is for. Um, on top of that, we're also going to be using some half inch brass screws to hold this on. Um, you can just glue it on, but I'm going to use those. Um, a thumb screw to go in down through the top. Now you could use a wedge, um, but I like using the, the thumb screw. I find that to be just a little bit uh, faster and easier than a wedge. Um, and as to tools, um, that kind of depends. I'm going to be showing a couple different ways of doing different things. Um, you're going to need a little bit of epoxy if you want to do this quickly. Otherwise, high glue can hold uh, the brass in place just as well. I'm going to be using five minute epoxy just so that I can do it live rather than having to sit for a day and a half and wait for the glue to set. Um, you're going to need the standard assortment of planes and chisels and saws. Um, and for putting this in though, you can do it with a saw and a chisel. And I'm going to show a little bit of that, but I'm going to actually be using my number 45 uh, to cut in an eighth inch groove. So we're going to be having a lot of fun. And if you do have any questions and you are live, throw those in the chat. My wife is down there so that she can uh, man that. And uh, if you have anything that comes up, let us know. Uh, if you're watching this recorded, I try to put a bunch of timestamps down below uh, with what we're doing, when we're doing it, so you can jump around with that, as well as the questions that have been asked. So uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun with this, and as always, let's do... Blah, blah, blah. Hell out! <laughs> as always, let's get tongue-tied. Uh, as always, let's have some fun. Uh, this isn't about making something perfect. This isn't about doing the highest quality humanly possible. This is about learning something new, trying something different. And so we're going to be doing a few techniques that are a little bit out of the box because we want to expand our uh, horizons and try something a little different. And make some mistakes because that's how you learn the best. So um, we are going to start off by putting the wear strip into the top of the beam. So this is one inch by one inch by about two foot long. It's actually a little shy of two foot long because my brass strip is two foot long and uh, my brass strip is about a quarter inch longer than my beam. Um, and we're going to put this in for two reasons. Number one, we want to think about the order of operations. I want to glue this in and have time for this to glue so that I can work on the beam. Well, I have the beam, then I'm going to be gluing this in, and I'll then come back to this. Well, that has set, and I can shape this down into the octagonal shape that I want. Does it have to be octagonal? No. Do I want it to be octagonal? Yes. I like octagons. Um, and then we can come back to this once it's set. So we're going to be bouncing back and forth because we need time to, for the glue to set. So the first problem is... This is an eighth inch stock, and I need basically an eighth inch groove running all the way down the top center of this for this to go into. Now, I can do that with a saw and a chisel. And if this were a half inch groove or even a quarter inch groove, I would probably do that just to show the simpler and easiest method, because anyone can grab a plow plane and do that. The problem is with an eighth inch groove, I'm cutting a slot that's ever so slightly thinner than a sixteenth inch. So I need to cut two slots apart that are less than the thickness of the blade. And that's possible, but very, very difficult. So I'm going to start it with this and show you um, about how it's going to look. Um, but then I'm going to switch over to the, where to put it, the, the uh, um, grooving plane, or Stanley 45. 
So I need to find out where the middle of this board is so that I know where it goes in the middle. So I'm going to put this on to something that looks like middle. And I'm going to draw a line. And then I'm going to turn around to the other side. And I'm going to see, does it fall right into that line? And, eh, wow, first time's a charm. I'm right into the middle of that line. So in this case, I'm going to draw one line right down the middle of this. And I'm making this one a little bit more faint. And yes, you can't make a marking gauge without a marking gauge that's necessary. And now I want this, I want lines to be off of that by a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to set this on here in that center point. And I'm going to grab my marking knife. And I'm going to hold it down so it's centered on there. Does this need to be absolutely dead center? No, it's just a wear point for the screw to push into. I'm going to mark on either side of that. And now I'm going to put this mark right into there, slide it over, and we'll run all the way down. This one I'm going to use a little bit heavier. Two strokes. If anyone has questions, go ahead and yell at me. No questions, but I'll always take the chance to yell at no. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to flip it around, and we'll make sure that my mark lines up with the hole on the other side. It does. We'll put that over here. We'll mark along that one. And so now I have basically three lines. Not basically. I have three lines running side by side all the way down this. Maybe a little harder to see. But if I focus, it might be a little easier. So we've got three lines down here. One of them is just a visual reference for center. And that one's weak. And then I have two heavy lines on the other side that are an eighth inch apart, separated by the thickness of this rod. So I'm going to try, I'm going to show you basically what I would do to do this with a saw and chisel. I'm going to put it into my vise, lock it down, about a quarter inch or so sticking up. Move this back a bit. There you go. And then I'm going to grab my tenon saw. Um, and the reason it would be a tenon saw is I'm doing a longer stroke cut. I could do it with my dovetail saw. Uh, dovetail saw would take... Um, take longer to do. Plus it would clog up with dust more. The tin saw has bigger teeth so it doesn't clog up quite easily. I'm going to start back here. It'll be very, very deep, delicate. The problem with this is I can't cut down more than an eighth inch. Oh look there, I'm already at depth. Come over to this one. And now I'm already at depth there. So I can use this and I'm going to kind of use the heel of the saw back here and run along this trying to keep it on that line, but not going down to depth. And then I move over to the other cut. I do the same thing over here. I try to keep it on line. I clean out those. Catch. But this is going to take forever because I can only go down an eighth inch and I have to keep them right apart. And then I could come in with an eighth inch chisel and remove the waste. And this chisel is exactly the same width as the brass rod I'm sticking in. And so with this, I can come in and create an eighth inch deep slot. But this is going to take a very, very long time to do this way. And it would be a very good chance I'm going to mess things up. And here I'm already peeling up the side because I'm getting a little too um, pushing out my saw cuts. They're just a little too close together. Here, I'll show you a close-up on this. Ooh, look at that. Focus, not on the floor. There we go. You see how it's chipping up a little bit on this side. But eventually... I could make a groove all the way along this that this will fit into, and that's actually a little bit wide. Uh, my saw carves were a little bit too, well, it's actually the right width, there you go. I was just splitting out this piece here, so I have a little bit of a gap over on this side. But that'll work. The epoxy will fill it in, and it's right about the right depth. There's two inches. Now I'd have to do that again 22 more times. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you how to set up a grooving plane to do the same thing, which would be much faster, much more efficient, 
And uh, for an eighth inch groove, much, much easier. So I'm going to grab my 45. Um, now, I actually had thought about making an eighth inch grooving plane for it. Um, and I have several videos making a grooving plane, which you can make one that will use your own chisel. And usually takes about an hour or two to make a grooving plane for it. So if you don't have a 45, you can make one. They're, they're relatively easy to make. Um, I have a bunch of videos on that. Paul Sellers has a couple of good videos on making rabbit planes that are basically the same thing. Um, and so we're going to use the 45. I'm going to take it apart because I need the fence to be off. And unfortunately, because I need it to be an eighth inch, I can only use one skate. So I have to take a skate off of it. And I'm going to bring this one up so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I have Once a question for you while you're setting What's that? What's that? Alex wants to know, is the rod necessary? No, nope. Um, it is just a wear point um, because we're going to have a screw going down to lock it down in. And eventually over time that screw is going to create dimples in the wood. Uh, so having the brass rod in there makes it uh, um, last longer. Um, but you don't use a panel gauge that much and so your points would be all over the place. So it would be kind of rare that you do the same spot over and over and over again. Um, now you could do it with a wedge rather than a screw. Um, I like the screw, so that's why I'm going to do that. Is this necessary? No, but it is fun. And one of the reasons why I like doing it is it's a chance to expand um, your experiences and your skills in different ways. So I'm going to find my eighth inch cutter. Here we are. I'm going to make sure it is an eighth inch. Make sure it's a little fatter than an eighth inch. Where is my... Do, 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 do. Uh, oh wait, is my eighth inch cutter in my 50? No, I have a quarter in there. Well, I might end up doing this one by hand. Or I could make it a bit fat and just fill it in with epoxy. <laughs> I was going to do this ahead of time, and I thought, no, I'll leave it until later so that there'll be some space in it. Oh, hey, I can do this. Ah, there we go. Yeah, you'll work. Okay, so what I have here is I have a rounding tool, um, but this has this long wedge here, and it is ever so slightly wedged at the beginning, but you only need to go in an eighth inch. So at this point, it's actually the width I need it to be. So I'm gonna use this. Uh, now this is actually one that's set up for an old style, so it doesn't have the notch in there. So that means it's gonna be a little harder to set up, but it will work perfectly fine. So first thing I need to do is loosen this one up. And as this one has problems, I need a mallet. And that drops out the quarter inch cutter I had in there because all Stanley 45s for some reason have a four quarter inch cutter in them when you buy them. It's the most common cutter you need. And then, oh, I didn't think about that because it's tapered onto that side uh, because it would be set up for the 55. Well, fart. Okay, this is reality. And this is what happens behind the scenes in every video is I run into figuring out, well, do I want to do it that way or do I want to do it that way? Um, let me just make sure my eighth inch didn't fall down somewhere. Where did it? Oh, there it is. Nope, that's the one I tried earlier. This one is like a 32nd of an inch too wide. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and use that. Does it need to be perfect? No. I'm going to fill it in with epoxy. Maybe I'll even color the epoxy. Ooh, that'll scare a few people. <laughs> so we're going to set this in. And this one doesn't have the notch because the pin came out. So I can, I, with this, I can push it forward, but I can't pull it back. So what I want to do is I'm going to eyeball down it. I'm going to make sure that the iron is... Um, not protruding. I want it to be back in a little bit. And then I'm going to easily push it forward. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to eyeball it until it's just sticking out. Just a hair. Lock that down. And I need to move this spur. I've got a spur sticking out from a test I did the other day. So I have a question for What's you. Um, Alex and Neon Joe want to know, um, would scratch stock work for this eighth inch groove? Yeah, yeah, scratch stock would work. So you go to the scratch stock, be a good chance to 
make a small eighth inch cutter and put it in there. For something small like that, that'd be great. And I have a couple videos on making scratch stocks. I'll do that. So, theoretically, that should be where I want it to be. Okay, but we've got about the right depth. Okay, we, we only see that you're yep. <laughs> I'm just, uh, just checking that. So the next thing we need to do is add the fence. And I want to have it on its highest setting because I don't want that fence to be sticking down very far. And this one is a bit of a pain to get on. It always makes me think something's in the way, but it's not. Making sure those are out of the way. And then we're going to tap them down in. What are you riding on? Is it that? No, you're out of the way. There it goes. Once it gets on past that little bit of mushroom at the end, I should come back through and file these at some point, just clean them up. But uh, it works. <laughs> and now, here's the problem we have, is that this fence sticks down below this. So if I have it in the vise right here, now this fence is running on the bench and the cutter isn't cutting because I'm riding on the bottom of the fence. So I need to lift this up. But if I lift it up high enough that it's not going to be, uh, that it'll actually cut, then um, it won't be in the vise anymore because it's only an inch deep. So we're going to take the stick out and we'll rotate it. And I'm going to put it between dogs. Um, I use dogs a lot in the bench because they really help you out. <laughs> I love it when my wife shakes her head like that. <laughs> she asked the question, why did I marry him? I forgot. <laughs> um, and here, I should, because this is an inch tall, I should be able to cut an eighth inch deep. Because I have about three quarter inch of fence sticking down. So I can set this on here, and sure enough, I can let it ride along. If my, if my stock is too thin and the fence is hitting it, then what I have to do is move this stick out to the edge of the bench. The problem is I don't have any dogs right on the edge of the bench. So in that case, I use double-sided tape um, and a stop that comes out to the very edge of the bench. And so I'll put down a piece of double-sided tape and a stop to run into, and that's all I need to do that. But in this case, I can do it between dogs, so no need for tape. So we need to set where the fence is. Put this over here. Make sure we're in the right spot. There we go. And I need to set this so that the... Here, turn around this way. I want to make sure that the skate is in the middle of the board. So to do that, we have to loosen the fence up a little bit and move it back and forth until my cutter is right into, also if I loosen it rather than tightening it, I'm going to move it until my cutter is right on those lines. Wiggle, 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 and tighten it down. Tighten it down. Rotate it around, make sure I'm good on this side. Good there, good there. And now we can cut a groove. So I'm going to go in here and go, oh, that is so groovy. Now before I go too deep, I want to make sure this is what I want. Yep, and it is going to be a little loose in there because that blade is just a hair bigger, about a, a 32nd of an inch too big. That's okay. I make lamb. <laughs> we're going to go down until we're at depth. I could take the time to set up the depth stop on it, but in this case I'm just going to eyeball it to about where I think it's going to be, and then I'll put it in and see where it needs some work. So I think I'm a little bit shy of being to full depth, and I'm just like one or two shavings shy at this end, and about the same, well, you know, I'm a little high right here. So I probably took one or two shapings without it actually cutting in. So I'm going to come back all the way. Just do these starter shapings. One. Two. Let's see how that goes. Set it in. Alright, that's where I want that side. That's nice. 
So we're just a little bit high from here to here by like one shaving. So Mark Barash wants to know, wouldn't a router plane with a fence work too? Would a what? A router plane with a fence. Um, if you have an eighth inch cutter or matching whatever rod. If you get a thicker rod, then hey, you can use a thicker cutter. Um, most router planes only have up to an eighth inch. But yes, if you had one with it, that would work great. One more. And as I get to this point, because I only need to do here, I'm going to be just lifting it out and letting it run out. Um, and I get this nice feathered out transition. Nice, 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 nice. There we go. Okay, so that's in all the way along there. Now, I need to glue this down in because Is there a way we can stay see by it itself. from... What's that? We're just looking at instead of down. Oh, here, let me bring this over. Do, 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 do. Focus. Here we go. Three. There go. So that's in there. And see, it's a little bit loose, but that's okay. We use epoxy and it will clean out nicely. And I could even use some epoxy and make like a little bit of a color contrast in there, but uh, I'm just going to use regular clear epoxy. And for that, we're going to be using five minute epoxy. What five minute epoxy? You know, when you're working with five minute epoxy, it really doesn't matter. Just use whichever one you can get, the cheap stuff. Uh, this is the, I'm using the JB Weld Clear Weld Quick Setting 5 Minute Epoxy. Uh, it's not my absolute favorite, but it works well and it's relatively affordable. Um, you can pick it up at any big box store, which makes things really easy. I'm going to grab Woodworker's Best Friend, some blue tape. Where is it, my wife? Hmm. Did you just compare me to tape? That's pretty high praise. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Why did you marry me again? Ah, that's debatable. And I'm going to need a decent amount of this. I'm probably going to mix it up in two quick batches. So, actually, no, I need to do one batch because I can't put the stick in twice. Um, so, the nice thing about these double tubes is... Focus this in a bit. Up, 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 there we go. Is I can just pump this out and have a nice, clean, even mixture. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. So let's throw that tube away. Let's pull out the brand new tube. And it's the exact same stuff. So we can just go again. That should be about enough. And the more you mix up, the faster it sets. So I got to be very careful with this. Make sure I get this cap back on. I'm going to grab ye old popsicle stick and mix it up. And one of the things with epoxy is it's only as good as you're mixing. And when you think it's about there, like right there, that's about mixed. No, it's about halfway. Because um, one of the things that will kill any good epoxy job is it just not being mixed enough? Do, 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 do. So what song do you sing how many times to make sure you... <laughs> <laughs> I don't do the nurse's thing. <laughs> I'm not that good. So we can put this in here. I'm going to bring my stick over. And for the application, actually, I'm going to use a brush for this one. I could, actually, let me show you a little trick that I do. Sometimes you move a piece over onto the slice of tape, and you can peel this off. And I've got that on there. This is a little slower, but I can let it drip out of the tape. Oof, I'm getting excited. My hands get shaky. And I can apply it along like that. And squeeze it out where I need a little more to be squeezed out. This is going to get messy, but that's not a problem. We're going to be cleaning off the face of this. But this one, I'm going to grab the brush. I get a little bit closer application with this. I'm going to be getting more on the face with this, but this will allow me to get it down into the groove a little bit better. And again, I'm going to be cleaning up the face later on, so I don't mind 
getting it onto the face of the board. Now the question comes, how do you clamp this in place? Well, one of the nice things about epoxy, epoxy does not require a clamping force to get it down in. Epoxy just requires that it be there uh, because it has really good gap filling. So if you don't get a force on it to hold it in place, that's not really a problem. Now I am going to be using a couple clamps on it just to keep it from moving around and make sure it's down all the way. Uh, but I don't need any clamping force like I would with PVA. Um, same thing with high glue. High glue really doesn't need that clamping force to be active. Um, it needs to be a little bit tighter than epoxy because it doesn't have quite the gap filling capability that epoxy has. Um, but it will do very well. Uh, you could also use um, DAP con contact adhesive. And um, that is a little bit harder because you can't dry it before you put it in. Otherwise it will contact the sides. But for metal to wood, my favorite is epoxy. For leather to wood, it's high glue. A little bit more. There we go. Now, brass strip. Slide it in place. And then we're going to use the secret weapon. Spring clamps. And I'm going to take the rubber off of the end so that the metal can peel off of the epoxy a little bit easier. And I'm going to put these every three inches or so along the stick so that it does not come loose. And again, I'm not putting it in for pressure, just putting it in to hold it in place. Any questions? Uh, not really. Cool. That means I'm answering them. So do you have the rod out on one side? Because you said it was a little bit longer. Yeah, I have it sticking out a little long on both sides. On both sides. Grab one more little plastic one. Put that in there. This is the one with the broken jaw. Oh, broken handle too. Oh, well, that one's trash. <laughs> oh, missed the trash can. No big surprise. Let's use this one. There we go. So I'm going to set this aside, let that five minute epoxy work. Now what you can do is you have this tape here, and so I'll peel it up, and I'm going to set this somewhere else. And this tape then allows me to know when is it cure, so I can feel the tape and know how hard is the epoxy um, that I have over there. So I'm going to set that over here, get that out of the way, and let's move on to the fence. Let's start some fencing. Uh, so this is seven by seven, oh, excuse me, seven by two and a half I by one like... inch, not seven by seven. <laughs> <laughs> I got to remind myself, slow down, because otherwise I get really excited because this is a lot of fun and that's why my hands start to shake and people are like, are you okay? Your hands are shaking. I'm like, yeah, I'm really having fun. This is what I do in the shop. Um, why do I do this? Because I enjoy it. There's a reason you're not a surgeon. <laughs> a, if I got excited by surgery, <laughs> woo! You'd be surprised. <laughs> so, um, I've got this bar stock. Um, I got this from McMaster. I have links to that um, in the plans. Um, it's not an easy one to find. Is it necessary? No, you can just do it with a rabbit, but I want to do this one up a little bit better. Um, so I have this on here. Now, the problem is this is a little bit longer than that. If you can't tell, I know I'd have to zoom in a little bit closer for you to see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on here and I'm going to mark how long it is and cut it to length. One of the nice things about brass is it works really, really easily. Um, you can actually plane brass with a regular plane blade. Um, you might end up chipping it a bit more, um, but it does work. And I've done a, a couple of videos actually showing that. And then we can come in, get the thing in focus. And I'm going to grab my hacksaw, which hopefully I have good teeth on that. They feel like it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. That one. And then we're going to cut it to length. And again, I'm going to leave this a little long because I can always trim it off. Actually, the teeth on this are not all that good. There we go. 
because I last used this to cut teeth in on a saw. And um, that actually wears these out pretty quickly. So, set that aside. Now we got this little blank that we need to push into this block. And so you set it on here, and you just push it really, really hard, and it'll go right in. Ready? Uh, okay, maybe not. Um, so, what we need to do is we need to cut a rabbit out of this. And uh, because I kind of cheated on the last one, I used a grooving plane to make a groove. I could use a rabbit plane to make a rabbit, but in this case, I'm not. I'm going to use a saw to make a rabbit. I know. Cheating it doesn't really matter. No one saw that coming. No one saw that coming. I'm going to use this to make a mark a half inch in. Oop, not half inch. There's half inch. And so theoretically, that mark should be dead on the line. It is. So this is half inch by half inch, so I can set my marking gauge to half inch. And I'm going to come in on one corner, and I'm going to mark out half inch. And then I'm going to do a little bit on the ends. Because I want to see if the saw cut is straight. Rotate it over this way, and half inch in this way. Should be about halfway into the block. Again on the ends to intersect with those lines that we just created. And like that, we've got a mark on there. So I'm going to put this into the vise first. And I'm going to grab my trusty 11 saw. Ah, no, 11 saw is not working. I'll grab the 10 end saw. And for this, I start out right on the edge of that line. I'm going to come down to depth, and I'm going to switch cameras here in a moment. So, let's actually zoom in a little bit. Not that far. Ooh, we don't need to see my belly button. So, I'm going to cut in at an angle, and I'm going to cut down to depth here. And then, I'm going to continue this across. Sometimes I start on the far side, sometimes I start on the close side. Kind of depends on how I feel at the moment. And because this one's only seven inches long, I'm going to cut from there to there. I'm going to rotate this around. And now I'm going to remind myself I need to cut on the other side of the line now. I'm going to do the same thing over here because then I'm cutting on the side that I can see. Established, and now we can play connect the dots across to the other line. Okay, there we go. And now when I cut, I want to make sure that the middle of my saw comes out the back of this and goes out the other side. So I make a full stroke all the way through, middle of the saw both ways. That way I can get rid of the dust from either direction. If it's ever jamming up, that's usually the problem, is that you're clogging up inside, not on your feet. Make sure I'm down to depth there. Yep. Down to depth on both sides. Then we can rotate it. Second verse, same as the first, just on a different angle. Any questions yet? Um... I think this was related to when you were cutting the brass. Wouldn't it have been easier to cut the longer end in the vise having all the extra length unsecured vibrates more in my experience? Um, six of does doesn't matter. It, it, if I hit cut the longer end, I'd have to have it on the other side of the vise um, because my mark was on that side, and so I'd have to move the camera gear around, and so it was just easier for me to do it on the short side. Um, if my camera gear wasn't in the way or I had Luke recording, then I probably would have held the long side in there. Um, but in that case... It, doesn't make that big a difference because my hand's holding the other side, so. At least I think my hand is holding the other side. I'll have to go back and watch the video. <laughs> Established. One side. Rotate it. Let me do the same thing this way.
You know, I was just thinking, I haven't done a giveaway on a live in a long time. So we might have to do one at the end of this. Maybe I'll give away one of the two panel gauges. I was like, what are you giving away? That might be a good idea. So, yeah, at the end of this, I might do a giveaway. Now we're established all the way through, and we're just waking, you know, flip around so you can actually see it breaking off. So we're really close. Three. Let's come in here. Two depths on this side. Almost to depth on that side. Oop, oh, there we go. <laughs> really close to depth on that side. There. Now we have this rabbit in here. And theoretically, that should fit in there. But you'll notice there'll be a slight gap here and there. It's not quite down to depth here. Actually, it's very, very nice on this edge. I like that. This side here, I've got a bit of a gap there. So I've got some junk up in this corner. I need to clean out. Yep, that's a little off the line. So we're just going to freehand that one. I could try and balance a router plane on this surface, um, and I could do that by lowering in the bench so it's at the same surface as this, but I actually just like to come in with this, or I could come in with a rabbit plane and clean up the rabbit. I'm just going to clean this right across. This one's a little dull. I'm getting a little more chip out than I want. Oh yeah, you are dull. Let me go up to my three-quarter. You should be sharp. Rather than taking the time to sharpen it, you know, that would be the easy thing to do. Now I just got some junk in the corner that I'm moving along there. I'm leaving this outside edge alone because I know that's good. See how that fits. Got a little bit of a rock in there. What are we running into? Okay, so we're down to depth there. So that means that now I have a little bit of junk here still. There you go. This is what a lot of good woodworking is. Just that fiddling. Get it close, check it, get it close, check it, get it close, check it. And there, that's about what I'm looking for. Nice fit there, nice fit there. Now, that is ready to go in place. But before I glue that in, I want to actually screw this down in. Um, do I need to screw it in? No, but because it's only held on two sides, I don't trust the epoxy that much. Now, do I keep this little piece or do I trash it? I trash it. Um, <laughs> so, what was I saying? Screws. Yes, screws. Um, I've got a few of them loose. Uh, the screws do two things. Number one, they'll hold it in place while the epoxy is going. Um, but number two, they, um, they stop it from um, moving around in the future. So if the epoxy ever gives way, they're the backup. Um, they don't really hold that much, uh, but they're there for the temporary. So I've got these tiny little half-inch brass screws. And we're going to be putting these in. I'm going to be putting three of them in. Uh, now, because we're going to have the rod going through the middle of this, I want two screws going up on outside, and I want one screw going in um, in the middle. Um, I could put more in, but the epoxy is really going to be holding it. This will just get them in place. So that means I need to drill holes in this, and then drill holes in that. Um, and for these holes, I want to make sure they're the right size. So we're going to open this up. And I'm going to grab a screw and find out what size it is. I could look at them and say, oh, look, they're number fours. What is a number four? It's eighth inch, right? No. Uh, 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Uh, 0 0.105. So I need the hole through the brass to be at least 0 0.105. And I want it to be ever so slightly larger than that. So I'm going to grab a set of bits. And let's see if I have one that small in here. I don't think you're that small. Yeah, 135. No, I don't want it quite that big. I want something like 110, 1.1 1 .1 or 
1.15. Not sure one of you are the right size. Let's see, what are you? You're 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.5. I don't want 1.05. I want something a little bit smaller. So if they don't have calipers, how would they know? Uh, what you can do is actually hold the bit up behind the screw. And if you can see the bit um, past the threads on the other side of the screw, then that means the bit is bigger. Um, but it's not quite as accurate. Oh, you're smaller. Oh, that's right, I went the other direction. I wanted a bigger bit, but I went for the smaller hole. Of course I did. What are you? 0.12. Yeah, you're close enough. How big is the head on this? I want to make sure the head doesn't fall through. And the head is 0.2. Oh, yeah, we're golden. So, I'm going to use this bit, and I'm going to use an egg beater drill. Could grab my drill bit. Actually, what size is in there? Nope. 0.105. The egg beater I like for small bits, up to about an eighth inch or so. It works very well for that. So, now I need to clamp this in place. And I'm going to put three holes through this. Do they need to be in an exact specific location? No. I'm going to use a, uh, a center, not a center finder, a, a punch to mark oh, out can, where I want it to be. Can you refocus it? No, I can't refocus it. There. Um, I want it to be there. This just gives me a small dimple that will hold the bit in place so it's not wandering all over the place. With my excited hands, that's important. And sorry for everyone, this is just a little bit boring. I think you beat that joke to death. <laughs> Beaten, I should say. Mm -hmm. All right. I gotta lift it up so I'm not catching on that. Mm. I'm gonna cut it. <laughs> Here we go. Now I've got a hole that theoretically that screw head should fit into. Now the problem is that screw head um, sticks out, and I don't want that, so we need to countersink it as well. So. In that case, I'm going to see, I think I have a countersink that will work that small. Where did you go? Any questions while I'm hunting? <laughs> no. Didn't you just clean your shop? There we go. <laughs> I did. Ah, no, I'm just off. This one's ever so slightly too big to reach up against that. So, that means we're going to have to use... The second method, which is a regular drill bit, um, but with a tapered head that is pretty close to the size, and that one's actually too big too. I need a smaller one than that. Let me grab, trying to find one with the right angled head at the right size. Will that one fit? That one won't fit, but this one. Ooh, that's close. Let me see if I've got one slightly smaller. It is very beneficial to have lots of lots of bits. Hey, there we go. You're more than small enough. There we go. So now, take that bit out. And put this bit in. And I don't want to drill through. I just want to drill a little countersink. Can you to the switch cameras? Oh, I thought it wasn't. Let's see what that looks like. So now that goes in, and it's not quite the right angle. I'm just going to go a little bit deeper. Oop. 
pushing too hard. I shouldn't be pushing at all. I should be letting the bit do its work. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, it's really close. Actually, let me just drill down a little bit farther. Because if, if the head is sticking out a little bit, that's okay. I can come into the file and flatten it down. Oh, we got that screw go. There it is. It's hiding. There's a reason I bought a box of 100 of them. It's still a little bit proud. And one more time. There we go. It's a hair proud, but I'm going to come in with a file and make that nice and smooth a little bit later. Yeah, that's what I want. So that's one. Now I got to do two more. So this is the time if anyone has any questions to throw them at me. And my wife will catch them because she is good at that. <laughs> I was totally was not paying attention to you at the moment. I was reading a comment. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I just said you're good at catching questions. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um. I don't know where I'd be in life without you. Mm -hmm. I would not be here. You would be a hermit, let's be honest. <laughs> Probably. Okay, let's drill another hole. Wait, what's that sound? What, what, what's, what is that sound? Do you hear it? What is that sound? I thought you were going to sing just feed it. <laughs> oh, wow. That was fast. <laughs> this is uh, exceptionally fast. <laughs> Do the counter sink. I have to make sure I don't go through with this. So I'm not gonna put any weight on it. Oop, like that. There you go. Now I know. Yes, I should be wearing safety glasses at this point. Right, reverse. Let's check it with the screw. Okay. What's that? Which camera? There you go. There it was almost. And this one is, it eh, needs a little more. Now, since I'm so close, i put it in this because this gives me a little bit more control, especially when I just want to take it down a hair. With the power, it'll catch it and just grind in. I don't want to do that. I think this one's already created a ledge, so I'm not going to be able to. Oh, wonderful. Nope, not going to be able to do that. So that means i got to be very, very, very careful since I brought the devil into it already. I have to continue with that. That was a hair too far. That one's perfect. Eh, it went a little too far, but it'll still work. So, get that out of here. No, I don't know how to drill. Why? Okay, um, next up, we've got that on there, we've got that on there. Um, 
before you go any farther than this, I want to do some shaping. I don't want this just to be a block. I want it to be a little bit different. And since our rod going through it is going to be octagonal, I want to put 45 degree corners on this. So for that, I'm going to grab the unsquare, the mor mortising, the, the uh, miter square, there's the word. And this is really nice because it's got that 45 degree on there. And so I can come off here and I can find a spot that I want it to be. On this, I'm going to grab my pencil. And with this, I can come in here and I can say, I want it to be there, except for I need a mark on the other side because I'm flipping it. So, in woodworking, is the plane mightier than the chisel or is the chisel mightier than the sword? No, the mightier, the miter plane is mightier. The miter plane is mightier? <laughs> the miter plane is mightier. And so I put that mark on the other side here. I can flip it over. And with that mark on there, I can line that mark up with the edge of the board. And now I know my two corners are going to be exactly the same. Here, so you can see that mark on there. Every now and then I need to come back and clean it off because I got a bunch of marks on there from other uses. <laughs> and now I know those two corners are exactly where they need to be. I can put this in here and grab my little square, put that right on to that mark, slide it over, and try and get out of the way of the camera. This is hard to do with the camera there. And then I can do it from the other side. Put it into that mark. And now we need to cut at an angle. So for that, I'm going to do that off the edge of the bench here. Put that in here so that the cut is actually still 90 degrees. I'm going to grab my sash saw, which is a cross cut, because I'd rather cross cut ripping grain than rip grain cross cut grain. Does that make sense? I'll say it 10 times fast. <laughs> And I'm going to cut across the top so I get a straight cut there. Once I reach that corner, I'm going to start lowering this down and follow the line that I can see. Down to here, now I'm corner to corner. Now if, I'm, if my saw is true and my arm is true, I'll get a straight cut all the way through. And those are some big ifs, but most of the time it works. <laughs> I do the same thing on the other corner. And this is just here for looks. If you don't like the looks, then do something different. You want to do like some sort of Roman OG on it or some other fun shape, go for it. Have some fun. Draw that line across the top and then lower it down. Corner to corner, and now we can just cut across. Pull it back a little too far. And put that back. Now, I want to clean those up because they're a little bit rough. And so I'm going to grab a well set up plane. Actually, I'm going to grab a regular number four and a small block plane. So I've got a little bit of chips from the saw coming out the other side. So I'm just going to run a little bit over there. I'm going to come back and chamfer it later, but I wanted to clean that up now. And I also have a small corner here where the, the last cut of the saw didn't go all the way through. Just kind of broke off that last bit. So I'm just going to clean, ooh, actually lock that down. I'm going to clean off that little corner so I'm not riding on that. And then I can take shaving all the way across. And I've gotten most of the surface. I got a little over here and a little right back here. There we go. Nice, clean, smooth surface that way. You can flip it around. Do the same on the other. We're going to do more detail cleanup in a little bit. This one's actually pretty clean. Except that this one is a little bit off angle. I can kind of eyeball that. There we go. Got it back on angle. It's amazing with a 45 on there, you can very easily see if you're off angle or tipped or turned. Um, the angles just all point to each other. And you can see it very, very clearly. <laughs> At least in person. In the camera, it doesn't pop up very well. So, 
there's our shape. Now we need to glue this on and screw it down in place. And while that glue is setting, we can go back to the beam, get that done while this glue is setting. And I'm hoping that glue is set up enough. It's no longer tacky, but not hard yet, but that should be okay. So um, we need to put in these little screws. Now I don't want to just put those into raw wood. I need to uh, pre-drill them first. So to make sure that they stay in the right place, we're gonna get our old friends, the spring clamps. And I'm gonna put two of those in here. I'm gonna lock this down in the bench right there. And now I'm gonna grab a drill bit that is smaller than it. And what you should be able to do is you should be able to hold it up to it. And you wanna be able to see the threads. So if you put the screw behind the bit, you wanna be able to see that the threads are poking up bigger than the bit. You want the shank of this to be the same size as the shank inside of the threads. I hope that I don't get shanked for that. It should be around that size. And for something this size, egg beater drill. I much prefer this over the electric drill for this stage because the electric drill, small bits, you end up bending them or doing something funky. And I don't like funky. So now I got those holes right where I want them to be. Can you switch cameras? I'll switch it after this one. Okay. And that's all we need. Now what I could do is I could then put in the screws to hold it in place. But the clamps are actually doing really well, so I'm going to leave those there. Three. So let's put this one right there. And if anything, I want the holes slightly towards the inside of this so that when I put the screw in, it sucks it back up against the corner. And this one, I want to make sure I don't accidentally drill all the way through the... <sighs> so, now, let's mix up a little bit more epoxy. I don't need quite as much on this one. I was counting the other day. I've got six rolls of blue tape around the shop here. And I currently know where five of them are, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> now, if only I knew where that many tape measures were. <laughs> <laughs> Grab some epoxies. Don't need that much, just need a bit. Put that in, put that in, rotate, three. There, up, there we go. Now you can actually see what I'm doing. And popsicle stick. Popsicle skull stick. stick. Uh, Dennis Miko wants to know, what model is the hand drill? Uh, it's a, I believe Miller's Falls, I don't know. Uh, no, this one's a Craftsman. Made in the USA. Um, I do not know. I, I don't follow models and brands very much for braces and drills because they're all basically the same. They have slight benefits one way or the other and little things that make one ever so slightly better than the other, but in general, not that much. That was the first one I ever bought, and it's the one I keep using. I like to do a little swirling. It kind of spreads it out, and then I bring the sticks and draw one pile back past the other. Sweep it out. Okay. Now, let's apply some epoxy, and I'm going to take this off, here, I'm going to take this brass off, and I'm going to set it straight down just like that, so that I know that it goes in that orientation. I don't want to flip it around any other way. Can you focus it? Yes, I can. Thank you. Now, I'm going to take this tape off, peel it up and use this to apply it over here. And 
I'm just going to squeeze it all out into place. I don't need it to be exactly where I need it yet. Just want it to be out. And then come in at the stick. And I want to get it up onto the top surface first because it will always drip back down. Cover the whole thing. And then we can bring it back down and cover the whole bottom surface. I have another question when you're ready. Yep, what's up? So Mark Baldwin wants to know, would you ever use a gimlet to pre-drill small holes? I hate gimlets, honestly. They are just annoying. Do they work? Yeah, they work great. They're just, I don't know. I have a hate relationship with them. <laughs> Too many times with a twisted wrist. Um, yeah. I'd rather small twist bits, but just personal preference. Okay, now we can set this up, put it back down in here, and then I can make sure I've got the right screwdriver. I want to make sure my screwdriver fits nicely into that. It does. Then I'm going to grab a hunk of wax, and I'm going to scrape off a little bit of wax into the threads. Hey, this will help James. it go in a little bit faster. Am I on the wrong one? There yep, thank you. And so we can put that in here. Actually, I'm going to do it in this one first. And we can drive it in. And it squeezes out a little bit of epoxy. I like that. There. And then I can grab another one. Add a little bit of wax to it. Put that down in here. Drive you down in. A little bit of epoxy squeeze out. One more. A little bit of wax. Put that on here. Yes, I do talk to myself even when the camera is off. I get, get that comment. That's a, a sign of intelligence because we all do that. <laughs> <laughs> You can talk to in. yourself. You can argue with yourself. You just can't argue with yourself and lose. <laughs> well, that hurts. <laughs> then set this tape aside so I know when this one is done. Oop. Don't tape yourself. Set that one over here. Um, ooh, don't want that running off under there. I'm just going to set that on top of the other one. So now... This is epoxied and in place. We're going to set it aside and come back to that one later. Then we're going to grab the piece I set down somewhere. It's over there. <laughs> this one! Look at that! It's, it's not tacky anymore, but it's still a little soft. Just going to make it a pain for cleaning off with um, um, a file. But take these off and before I forget to do that I am going to put all of these rubber sleeves back onto them otherwise the rubber sleeves walk away and then I wonder where are they because a lot of them are already missing them and I'll put all of these away Oops. after the live so Bradley Jackson asked why do you wax the threads? Uh, it makes them go in much easier. And especially when doing brass screws, uh, there's a tendency for the brass to catch in the wood. And because they're so small, it's very, very easy to twist the head off. Now, if you put wax on there, then they're not going to catch in the wood as easily. So it allows that so you're not stripping off a head. Um, the nice thing about the, the paste wax is that it will cure and it will um, harden up over time. And you get a nice finish in there. Um, now, in that case, I probably could have gotten away with it because the epoxy probably would have lubricated the threads enough. Um, but in this case, I want to actually be able to take out the screws in the future. Which I don't know why, because I epoxy the thing in. But, eh. <laughs> That's the answer to a lot of things. Eh. Why did you do that? Because I did. <laughs> uh, let me see, where did this bit come from? This bit came from this. I always want to make sure I put my drill bits back, otherwise I'm going to lose them. And put away this one. 
So is there not like a picture in the drill bits that are like, if you put them back in the right spot, it tells you what the drill bit size is? Well, the drill bit sizes are, are listed on here. Oh, I, I'm a visual. I mean, you can look at it. The problem is these small ones, yeah. you could never read a size on them. No, but I meant a picture of it. Picture of it? Yeah, like an outline. Well, I mean, they're so close that you couldn't tell the difference between one and the other. You can't like draw a line behind it. They are, they are visually, if you held the two of them up a half inch apart, you wouldn't be able to tell which was which. One of my favorite there's lines There's got to be a Wicked. better way to label them. <laughs> was it? I said there's got to be a better way to label them. <laughs> Color coding, something. <laughs> People like me need this. <laughs> Come on, someone needs to manufacture this. Okay, so now this is in here. Gonna pull this up a little bit. My pinch tog slid down in. So we need to clean up the excess epoxy on here. Now normally what I would do is I'd leave this sit for 24 hours and I'd come back and scrape it off. Uh, and so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a chisel onto dishonor. Which is actually, <laughs> um, I had a three quarter inch Narex Richter. Um, which is a really nice chisel but I, uh, well it, um, it, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> so should we let the record show it wasn't Sarah? No. Who did anything? Well, no, this one actually, <laughs> this one actually had a factory default in it, um, and they very, very quickly replaced it. So, yeah. That's one of the things I love, um, particularly in my, my position, is anytime I find a tool that breaks or doesn't do what I want to do, um, I'll open another account and contact the seller because I like to see their um, um, uh, what's the word for? customer service. Um, and they were phenomenal with this. Uh, they didn't know who I was and they said, oh, no problem. Keep that one, get rid of it. And I keep thinking, oh, I should put a handle on that one. I just never got into it. Um, so they sent me out another one. I had it within a week and I was very, very happy. It's one of the reasons why I like Tay Tools. Their customer service is, is top notch. Every time I've had a problem, they've stepped up with it. So I'm coming in here. I guess I should show you what I'm doing. And I'm just going to be scraping off the, the epoxy because it's currently in the taffy stage, which makes it easier to work with. It's not quite as adhered yet. And so I can let the brass slide on that bevel and clean off as much as I can. The nice thing is it's the stage where you can peel it off mostly and it should stay off of the tool but there's a reason I'm not using my good tools to do that just using this there's a couple places where the brass is ever so slightly higher a couple places where it's ever so slightly lower and that's okay because in the end we're going to come in with a file and smooth it all down actually let me go ahead and do that now I'm going to use a file that doesn't have huge, that has um, slightly larger teeth. So this one I'm going to come in this way. I'm going to draw file it. It's actually peeling it off nicely. And I'm going, and I have shiny brass here and dull brass here. Can you focus I want to go until it? I get... Let me zoom in on this spot here. Oh, ooh, hey, ooh, let's try that. There we go. So you can see a couple spots with shiny brass, a couple spots with dull brass. I'm starting to get that clogged up. <laughs> so we can grab this. So I have a question for you. What's that? Because I know you use hide glue, but do you ever use hot hide glue? Um, no, generally I use liquid hide glue. It's just easier. Just gonna take a little bit.
And then I can clean out some more epoxy and do it again. Now normally, if I had the time, ooh, this one's setting in a good bit. I don't like that. There we go. Normally if I have the time, I'm gonna let it sit overnight. Um, and then I could come in with a plane and just do one pass, brass and all, and get a nice clean surface across there. Okay, I'm gonna use this one. Big old teeth -o. Now you're just smearing. You have to wait on the surface a little bit longer. So just remind a little bit sticky here in the middle. Me earlier, the wood you picked was that just what you had on hand? Yes, yeah, it's, it's red oak. Nothing what? special. I know red oak. So there's not necessarily a better wood than the other for this kind of a project. It's not really. Okay. Um, straight grained is good. The straighter the grain, the less it's going to be warping and twisting around. Um, so I wouldn't pick something that's really heavily figured and beautiful looking. No quarters on. <laughs> because you don't want it to be moving around in the future. So, now, I've got that almost cleaned off. I'm going to wait until it cures a little bit more and I'll be able to polish that off a little later. It's still a little tacky here. Um, set those up over there. Brass is sticking out a little bit extra long on both ends. And so I want to clean that off. Whoa. So that means I put it in here. I'm going to put it this way. And have this sticking out. So the brass is sticking out a little bit on this side here. here focus on my hand. There we go. Grab the dull hacksaw once more. And we come down here. And I can use the side of it as a fence. Clean that off. And actually the other one is close enough that I'm just going to put it up vertical in this and file it off. So let's grab that file again. Ow. like that. Flip it around. Do the same thing on the other end. And there we go. So now we have a rod and theoretically we could just use that and make the whole square. But I want to make it octagonal. Why? Because I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> I like no, it. it's because you love chamfering things. I do. An octagon's like the uh, the extreme chamfer. Breaking out those little pieces of epoxy still in there. There we go. Happy. Um, so now the question is, how do you octagonalize a board? Um, and there's a whole bunch of math you can do on it. Or you could just eyeball it and go to town on it. And that's normally what I do because I'm just too lazy to do the math and figure it out. Um, or you could... Just use the stop signs. <laughs> you could get a, a set of stencils um, and put that on there um, and trace out on the end. Um, or you could use the miter square, which I put back up, because it's 45 degrees all the way around. Um, th th there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Uh, and so it's one of those things of... Does it need to be perfect? Technically, no. However, because we have it sliding all the way through, it needs to be the same shape all the way through. It doesn't have to be exactly the right, um, exactly octagonal all the way through. Um, it could be like a, a parallel octagonal, um, but as long as it's that same shape all the way down the shaft, that's what matters. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my miter gauge and I'm going to kind of eyeball this around with a bit of a pencil. And I'm going to draw a shape on the end here that looks good. And I only need to do it on one end, because I'll show you why in here in a moment. 
Um, let's focus in on the end of this. There we go, three. So I can set this on here. And this one, actually we have to do it from the inside here. So we have a question. What's that? Craig McNamara, sorry if I messed that up. What is the brush you're using to get the epoxy out? I think That is a card file. Um, you can find them on Amazon, but it's just a, a steel brush. Some people prefer to use a nylon. Um, but uh, oh, here, I'll give you a closer up on it. So it's just these bristles on here. Um, I like to use the, the metal. It, it doesn't hurt the file at all, um, but it allows you to clean out all the junk on there. So what I'm going to do on here is I just drew two angles on the end of this. And I'm going to see which one of these look good and what is the measurement difference. Um, and I'm going to come in with either calipers or measuring. What I want is I want this angle to be the same as this angle. In the next case, they're a little bit different. But then I could do this one. So yeah, that needs to come in a little bit more. So I'm just going to play with this until I find something that's just about right. So let's see what does that give me. That to that. That. Yeah, that looks about right. Now the important thing is not the length of the face, but the length from the face into that line. And I want that measurement to be the same because I'm going to be able to mark all four sides with that measurement, which in this case is going to be uh, 2.87-ish. It's whatever that is. It doesn't really matter what the measurement is. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to grab my marking gauge and I'm going to set my marking gauge to that mark. Your hands are shaking. Yeah, you can tell I get really, really exciting, especially in lives. Um, or like when Luke comes over to record and I do a whole bunch of them and I just get all excited. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> okay, there we go. That is right where I want it to be. Now I can take this marking gauge and I can mark two lines on all four sides. And then I just play a game of connect the dots with a, with a uh, plane, and it's octagonal-ish, enough. So I can set this up on here, and I can draw one line down this face. Flip it 180. One line down this face. I'm going to do this eight times. It's one of the fun things about making a video is that I show this once, and then you guys don't have to watch the rest. <sighs> but I can guarantee you, no matter how slow and tedious it is, it's not boring. It's marking. Definitely leaves an impression. <laughs> I have been deeply impressed. <laughs> Two Ooh. of four. Do I make sure I don't see even that? have any questions to throw it at you right now. That's the thing. I'm like, yeah, these live builds. Um, How about what are you fun, gonna what what are your next plans with where you're? Um, gonna be? I've got a bunch of little projects we're working on. Um, I've got some back saws. Hopefully, next Saturday's video we'll be making back saws. I've got uh, the rest of the um, end table build coming up here soon. One more, one more, one big one. <laughs> it's the same size as all the rest. <laughs> there we go. And now we can take this and we can put it in the vise at 45 degrees. So that, there we go. 
so that when I put it in here, that line, theoretically, should be vertical. Put it in there, clamp it 45 degrees, and hope that's the grain direction. In this case, I'm going to use my low angle, because I have that set up as a pretty heavy cut at the moment. Sounds with the grain, hard to tell in the corner though. Should set up a little bit heavier than that. And I keep going until I get really close to those lines. And all I'm doing is watching the line here and the line on here, playing a little game of connect the dots. And usually what happens is that I get close to it here, but not on this side, so I need to tip the plane a little bit here. Now I'm really close to it here, so I'm going to stop, start in the middle here. So because it's such a small difference, you wanted to plane this versus sawing? Uh, yeah, this is just a small piece. It'd be really, really hard to saw this straight. It'd be very, very hard to hold it while you saw it because it's at a weird angle. Let me get a close up here and show you what this actually looks like. Ooh, not that. Here, let's do it this way. Let me do this while I'm doing this, sorry. <laughs> and where are we at? I want to see this spot here. There we go. Let's see if I can do it without hitting the camera now. So you can see here I'm a little ways away from the line, and I want to stop a little ways away from it. As a matter of fact, that's about where I want to stop right there. Just hit the corner of it. Except I have to get it a little bit back here as well. So is this similar to what you did when you made your pew, 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 pull cue? Um, yeah. If this was a little longer, I'd probably pull out that pull cue jig. Actually, I don't think I even have that thing anymore. That looks good. That looks good. So we're octagon, or one of the four sides are now octagon. So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to rotate it 180, and do the next side. Second verse, same as the first. Ought to get better, but <laughs> we all know what's going to happen. Make sure it's vertical. Oop, here we go. And do so it again. If you don't have a low angle back plane, can you? I mean, like, as oh, a you can do it. Plane, I just have this one. Set, this one's just set up right now. To take a heavy cut. Gotcha. So I'm not really worried about making a fine, clean cut. I'm just getting material off. Um, later on, I'll come back in with a nice, well set up, fine plane and do the, the last on all of them before we actually put it in. Um, but for right now, this one's taking off a little over a hundredth of an inch. I love when these curls pile up like that. It's just fun. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Um, I've got a whole bunch of really cool video to, uh, tool tor 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 <laughs> tool tor tor tutorials. Tool tutorials. Wow! <laughs> got a bunch of those coming up. Um, interesting, rare tools. I'm actually going against the grain now. Now that I've gotten down to making a thicker cut, I can actually see it. Just put out a short yesterday on how to read the grain. And most of the time as you read the grain, you put it in, you do a pass, and you realize, no, it goes the other direction. So are you going to do any um, builds that, I can't think of the name of the book you got. Oh, the, uh, um, yes, the, the plates. Yes. Um, no, I don't have any of those right now planned. Um, but maybe, maybe in the future. I've got so many things on the list right now. I probably have videos planned out until late January. Um, so, way down the list. So now I've done two parallel sides. 
I can rotate it 90 degrees. Do the next two. I'm going to guess this direction. And now that I have it on here, I have two parallel sides. Make it seem like it's a little easier to clamp. No, that is obviously going against the grain. <laughs> Here we go. There's another five minute epoxy that I normally use that's usually like in 15 minutes, it's hard. And I really like that one for shooting videos, though it is the most brittle of them. So if I ever need it for a situation where it's going to be getting a lot of use, a lot of vibration, it's not usually the one I'm going to grab. All right, I have a question now. What's that? <clears throat> I said I have a question from the chat. What's that? So Vasilios wants to know, late in the game and watching from the start, wouldn't it be better to use a mortise and gauge to center the eight and throd in the middle of the beam instead of measuring? Um, yeah, you could have used a mortise and gauge to mark both sides of it, a mortise and gauge. Um, six of it does another. I wanted to make sure that it was centered and I didn't care exactly that those marks were there, right where they needed to be. So. Um, I decided to do that, and marking from both sides guarantees you're going to be dead center. And in this case, that was a little bit more important. Just making sure, got the lines from there to there, there to there. Just hitting the spots where we're still a little high. There we go. Another octagon on on. All right, you ready for another question? Sure. Uh, plain Old Woodworking asked, with the amount of octagons you make, have you thought about a V-groove block to hold the work? Um, I've done a few of those, but most of the time I find it's just easier to put it in the vise, um, unless it's going to be long, like the Q-stick. Um, in that case, having something mounted up so that I have support all the way along is good, but for most things, the two foot is all I need, so I like just holding it in the vise. But doesn't mean it's right or wrong, it's just the way I like to do it. I made sure to, sh to flip this end for end, because I knew the other side, the grain was going the other direction. And if you flip a board 180, it's pretty sure the grain's the opposite direction. So if you flip it end for end, pretty good chance you're going to be going the right direction. Not guaranteed, but pretty good. In woodworking, there really is no 100% guarantee. Getting there. I can't see. Really close here, really close there. So let's start it here. One more length pass. Let's see how that looks. That's what I'm looking for. So, now we've got an octagon. It rolls and feels like an octagon. I like it. Octagon shaft. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to make the hole that this goes into just a hair tight so that I can come back to this later and I can detail this and smooth it down. Um, so we're going to set this aside to where it is right now and we're going to grab this fence and come back to this. Um, and before cleaning off all the epoxy and that on there, I'm going to drill a hole for this to go into. Why does that look so wonky? Why does that look so wonky? Oh, it's just a wood grain. Oh, that's weird. That's a weird visual reference. Let me show you this. I don't know if it will pick up on camera, but uh, Focus at three. This looks like this side of the board is taller than this side of the board. But it's just because the grain direction. I flip it around and it looks right. I don't know. It just kind of looks funky. At least it does in purpose. I don't know if it does in there. Um, so what I need to do is I need to cut a hole for this to go in 
directly above this brass. Because um, I want the bottom of this to be sliding on that brass. Um, so in this case, first thing I'm going to do is find out where is center on this block. And the easiest way I've found to do that is with a marking gauge. I know this is seven inches long, so theoretically it should be three and a half inches. So I can set my fence at three and a half. Bring this in. Up. In. Down. There we go. Three. And so I'm going to come in here and mark three and a half. And wow, am I actually on? Huh. Okay. Three and a half. We're dead on. <laughs> That is nice, uh, that is very usable. And then we need to come up um, a half plus this eighth. So I need to come up um, five eighths, theoretically. When you get a moment, I have a question. Okay, go for it. Vanessa Kitty wants to know, what is a panel gauge? Um, oh yeah, sure, maybe we should talk about that. A panel gauge is a marking gauge for panels. Um, a marking gauge is good, usually up to about four, maybe five, maybe six inches at the most. But at that point, it's just too much leverage. The fence isn't big enough. So you can put a bigger fence on it so you can reach in farther. So a panel gauge is just a big marking gauge. Exact same thing, just bigger. Um, so usually I'll work with a panel gauge up to about two feet. After two feet, it's easier to mark a distance and strap a line. Um, but when you're working with um, solid wood, it's very, very rare that you have to put a line farther in than two feet into a board. Um, actually, in the projects I built in the shop, I don't think I've ever done that. Um, even if you're working with panel stock, a four by eight, the farthest you reach into a board is two feet. So, unless you're working with an unusual, usual edge. Um, so, we need to put this into this. Now I have those centers marked out. Um, yeah, that works well. So now that I have the centers marked out, I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to do what I like to do, which is called eyeballing it. And I'm going to put that center line right in the center of the brass, and I'm going to put a mark over here, and then we'll rotate around and put a mark on this side. And so now I know how wide this is. Now you know how tall it is, so I'm going to put the top of it or the bottom of it on the brass, and we make a mark up here. So now I know my octagonal size, and theoretically, if I drill a hole right on that mark, it should be the same distance from that mark that I just drew, and that mark, and that mark. Um, so let me grab a square and just move these lines up a little bit higher. And to there. So um, now I don't want to drill a one inch hole because this is one inch by one inch. So that means, um, actually no, it's it's one inch by one inch. Yeah, I do want to drill a one inch hole. That's what I want, right? One inch by one inch. Yes, I want to drill a one inch hole. <laughs> so um, as long as my one inch hole starts dead in the center, it theoretically should work. Now I could play it safe and back it down a sixteenth to a uh, a, uh, um, uh, a 15 sixteenths, which is what I'm going to do, um, because there is no such thing as perfection in the woodworking world. So let me make sure I've got one inch, and I have my 15 sixteenths. So are you saying close sixteenths. enough only counts in... Um, Horseshoes, hand grenades, and woodworking? Hand grenades and woodworking. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. And I want to make sure I put... I made that, that center mark earlier. I'm going to put the bit on here. And I'm going to make sure that as I spin it, I'm actually like eyeballing down the bit, um, that I'm not going to be hitting any of those marks that I just made. I want to be a little ways away from it. So this is a 16th ouch. I'm going to be about 30 second away from each of those marks. In this case, it looks like I'm pretty good. So now we clamp this in the vise. Actually, I'm going to clamp it this way. Um, and the reason why I want to, this is rather thin stock, and if I start putting this in there, that auger tip, the snail, is actually like a wedge, and so it's driving into the wood, and it's trying to split this apart, so there's a chance that I'll get a crack running out this way on it. But if I clamp it this way, I'll be holding it together so that I won't be cracking out. So I'm going to put it in the vise, 
putting force into it, helping to stop it from clamping. The other thing that this does is it allows me to drill in my favorite method, which is sticking it into the gut. And focus there. Um, actually, move it out this way because you'll see the brace spinning here in a minute. So I'm going to grab. You didn't hear that. <laughs> brace okay, bit. Which, which camera do you think you're on? Um, I think I'm on this one. Okay. <laughs> Back it up a little more. There we go. So I've got my bit and brace. And this one has a chuck that I can actually hold these um, hexagonal bits. I do have an adapter for it from other ones. But I can put this right into that center mark and start rotating. You didn't put a ring on it. No, I'm going to eyeball this one. <laughs> Is it because it's smaller or just... I'm only going through an inch of wood and I'll have some ability to um, straighten it out as I, tr as I carve it because I made it a little bit smaller than it needs to be. I'm also making sure the tip when it pokes out on the other side, I stop before that, or I stop right when it pokes out. So do a couple cranks, feel for it. All right, just, just barely feel it. There we go. So what that allows me to do is turn it around and drill from the other side so I'm not blowing out fibers. I can turn it around, find that tiny little dimple where it came in on this side. And then, you can put it into that flint, tiny little dimple and bore from this side. <laughs> so Dennis wants to know what size brace are you using for the wood owl bit? This is a 12 inch swing, um, or 12 inch throw, depending upon which way you want to measure it, it's six inches out, which is the most common one I use. Um, I do use my three inch quite a bit because uh, it's really, really fast, and for the smaller bits, it works great. Uh, but for an inch and seven eighths, it's a bit big for it. Um, and then I do have my uh, uh, the nine inch, which when I really need to crank a bit, I can. So we cut that out. Ah, cut it out. Now we've got a hole running all the way through this. But I want an octagon. I don't want a circle. So I'm going to set it on the bench. And now the interesting thing is I want to measure how big the faces are on this. And they are. No size. Uh, 0.375. 3 8 Wow, almost exactly. 3 8 Cool. So I'm going to use one of the least used chisels in my list, the 3 8 Bring it over here. Yeah, it's just about perfect. Nice. And I can use this to draw my octagon. Um, but before I do that, I'm actually going to draw what I want to carve. I'm going to use that to carve my octagon, not to draw it. <laughs> Live videos are always fun. You never know what I'm going to say. It's kind of scary for my wife. She's living on the edge of her it seat. It doesn't have to be alive for that to happen. <laughs> so I'm going to set this on here. Okay. Between those marks. Which camera? I'm going to move it over in just a moment. I'm oh, just okay. getting it into place. I'm making sure. There we go. Three. And I'm going to mark where these sides are. Actually, I'm going to use... I'm going to use a pencil for this. The reason I'm being, I'm using a pencil, is it's really hard to hold this in place. And like, a pencil you, puts less pressure. Do you need help? Around. Or are you trying to do this? No, I'm just, the, the knife is going to be accurate, but at this case, point, I don't need to be very accurate. I just need to stay away from a line. And so I'm going to put this in here. And it's going to be a little easier to hold it in place and mark with a pencil, because the pencil doesn't put as much force on the wood. And I can go past very easily and draw out my octagon. There, octagon. Now let's hold it in place with anything else but a hold fast. Grab the mallet, 
to bash that down on. And now we can do a bit of carving. Um, at this point, I want to be careful. I want to go slowly. Drop the, vice, bench, the clamps on the floor. Uh, because I don't want to go too far. I don't want to go too fast. And I want to stay away from my lines as long as possible. And I sat down without grabbing my mallet. There we go. <laughs> Those are the things you don't get to see in the regular videos. <laughs> so I'm going to set this on here. Actually, let me see if I can get a good angle on this. It's hard to do this backwards and upside down. So, I set it on here. I'm going to be a little ways away from my line. So, that would be dead on my line. I'm going to bring it back to here. I'm going to tap down a little ways. Did you say what size chisel you're using? Three eighths. Okay. And again, be a little ways away from my line. And I'm not going to do this top section that's going with the grain. I'm going to save that for later. A little ways away from the line. Going down a little bit past halfway in depth. Because I'm going to be flipping it around here in a little bit. That one's really close to the line, so I'm going to come over here. And this is just a slow detail game. Now, in this case, I want it to come right up to that brass. I want the brass to be the bottom edge of the line. So I'm going to chisel right up against that brass and I'm going to bust it out right here. Because I want to remove that. Theoretically, the brass will then be a cutting guide for the other side. So now, I've gotten pretty close to the line all the way around. I'm going to come back up in here. And on this top corner, I'm going to go right into the line. Again, down about halfway. Come over here and go right into the line. Come move a little bit more over here. And then I'm going to do it over here, staying away from that top one still. Because that's going with the grain. So I'm trying to sever the fibers at either end of that top one before going into it. I think we're going to do now. So right on the edge of my line. This one I'm actually going to hoop through the hand. I'm going to come in and clean up those corners. Make them all match. Pretty close. Pretty close. Uh, Vanessa Kitty wants to know, is your shop puzzle for sale yet? No, 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 no. Um, I actually just ordered them. Um, so I'm hoping they'll be going the end of October. For those of you who don't know, um, every two years I create a, sh a puzzle of my shop. Um, and I sell it for, for Christmas. And I make a very limited run of them. And when they're gone, they're gone. And you have to wait two more years to get the next one. Um, and I know of at least two people who have both of them so far. So this will be the third one in the series. This will be kind of fun. I'll look at it and make sure I need to go a little bit farther on this one. So yeah, they're, they're, I, I love the puzzles um, because they are, they're so detailed. You can pick up a piece and be like, yeah, I know where that goes. And... Uh, what tool is that? I should know what tool that is. And then finally I figured out, I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that tool. <laughs> they're, they're a lot of fun. And I, I'll be doing, on this one, I'll also be including a list of seek and find items. So uh, can you find the DeWalt drill? Um, that type of thing. <laughs> no, you can't find a DeWalt drill. I don't have a DeWalt drill. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my. Oh, 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 my. Miracles do happen. Wow. <laughs> First try. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know, go up another I, I was, octave. I was just going to be sitting in there to see, you know, does it work, actually? But this one goes, look at that. That's like, that's, that's, that's gorgeous. Does it work on the other end? Probably will not work on the other end, because I marked that end. Nope, this end is a little bit fat. We're going to be doing some modifications. So, yeah, look at that. That's what I want. That goes, that's, yeah, that's good. Now we're going to... Okay, and this question, here's the point in which I have a question. I can chisel all the way down from this side because this is intended to go through this way. Or I can flip it over 
and try and make it match up this way, but I don't have all those transfer marks onto this side, which I could have transferred those around, but I decided not to. So normally, normally I'm going to transfer and mark the other side so I get a good, good clean cut. But in this time, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy with how this came out and it slides in there nicely. And that is just, that's beautiful. Um, that was wildly unexpected. Um, and it's going down as far as I have carved. I'm thinking I'm actually just gonna chisel it all from the one side. Now to do this, you have to be very, very careful. Um, you need a wood on the other side. It's actually a little bit harder. So I'm gonna use some white oak as a backing plate and put that down into here and clamp this down on. And I want my clamping pressure to be very, very close to it. Grab this, lock it down on. And it's very important that it be pushed down into that hard surface incredibly well. And then the trick is when you're chiseling down, you don't wanna chisel past that surface. You wanna stop ever so slightly short of that surface so you can come into the file and clean it out. Um, Otherwise, you're going to be blowing out fibers on the other side. So, let me show you what this will look like. And since I'm so close, I'm just going to use this and wiggle down. And I'm going to use the surface I have so far as my reference. And I'm just going to wiggle around this down to depth. Not that one yet. In this case, whoop, ah, don't hit the camera. Get a little closer to the line before I go down farther. Kids are dropping things. <laughs> That's me. That was you? That was oh. me. See, it's not just okay. you. So now I know that won't fit but I'm really, 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 really close. I mean, like, really close. So are you going to finish it by filing? I'm going to file it. So now I can put this in here, and it should go right up to that other side. Let me flip it around. So I can see just a little bit in there where it's not coming through. And I can see where I'm tight and where I'm loose. I'm going to chisel just a little more on this one. I can go a little more, turn around so I can see what I'm doing. Just want to get as close as I can. And then I can set this in the vise and I can come back and file each of those two. So for the file, I have a square. Uh, not that one. Actually, ha, 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 I do have an octagon file, uh, which is what, 60 degrees? 45, 90, 60. 130 degrees. 100, no, 135 degrees. Or, yeah, 135 degrees. 95 plus 45. Or 90 plus 45. So now, focus on that, and I can come in here with this, and I could use one with just a, a flat square file, whichever I want to turn it around. I want to be pushing in on the surface that needs some work so that I'm not busting those fibers out. And now I'm going to play the part of click spring. Welcome back for another day. And very slowly, which if you haven't seen, he just put out another video last night and it was so cool. There's that one. There's that one. That one's good. Rotate it again.
This is not going to be as precise as something quick spring would make. But let's give this a heave ho and see what happens. Is it this direction? Nope, it's the other direction. This one. There Why you are you checking in on that side versus the other side that you made? Um, Because I want to make sure it goes all the way through. Even though you started on the other I, I side? Want to make, this one is going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, it's going to be a little bit tighter because I didn't quite push it as far. But I wanted to see where it's rubbing. And it's actually really close except for right up on this corner. So I'm going to do a little no, bit more. I'm saying work. you referenced on the other side. Yeah. So it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't matter, no. It, theoretically, it should be able to slide all the way through. Either so way, all faces but... should be able to fit in there. In this case, it's really, really tight up to around there. Um, stick it into the other side. And I'm always making sure the brass wear strip is up. Here we go. So that's about what I'm looking for. And I want this to be tight because I would rather make modifications on the beam than on this. And I want it to slide through easily. I want this to be able to just ride through with a little bit of pressure. I don't want it to be something I have to jam back and forth. Excuse me. Otherwise, I'll introduce weaknesses in there. So I've got this up to around there. So what I want to do is I want to see which side is it really tight on. And I can do this by, if I hold it up to the light, I can look through this and I can see which side is it rubbing on. And it's rubbing on this side. So that side that's up, I'm going to put that into the vise. And then I'm going to grab my smoothing plane and take two passes. And I'm going to stick it out a little bit, actually back past my vise. And that is the top, so it goes this way. You want to see. Ah, yeah, see that made it. That's what I'm looking for right there. I want a little bit of friction so it stays in any particular place I put it, but it doesn't take a lot of force. I can move it in and out. So I know I'm good up to this point here. And at that point, I can look through and I can see where am I rubbing on this one. And I'm still rubbing on that same side. So I can take that off and I know that I can get it on at least that far. So that means I don't want to touch back here. I'm just going to come back to here. Move it onto that. Let's try it again, see if we can get in farther. Ooh, yeah. Now. And if it's a little bit tight to begin with, um, don't worry, it's going to burnish itself down over time. And there we go. That's what I'm looking for. So, so is I'm this something you could like wax if you just. Yeah, oh yeah, I'll be waxing it later. Okay. So let's see how much farther I can get. Oh, now I'm happy. <laughs> it's, it's working that far and I'm getting really good friction. If I, if I twist it at all, any one direction or the other, it binds up. So I have to make sure I'm putting the same amount of pressure on both sides and it will loosen. As long as I'm putting the same pressure on both sides, it comes all the way down. So that's good so far. Let's see, can I get the rest of the way? because I'm putting it on both sides. I'm good. Right up until there. Oh, that's tight right at the end. Which is fine. Because you're not going to ever push it. Because I can work on that. Oh. Uh, well, I can, I, it's, it's, it will rub out over time because it's right there at the end. What I'm saying is you wouldn't push it all the way off anyway. <laughs> no, I wouldn't push it all the way off. But now, now we've got a rod. It slides through there nice all the way. And theoretically it should be So slightly out of square. Do you know what I'm gonna say to that? Meh. Oh well. Because it doesn't matter if this beam isn't square because you have a point out here and you're referencing two points on this. So you're making a triangle. You're not making a square. It doesn't need to be square. It just needs to have that point the same distance away from this fence. So even if this was at a weird angle, as long as it falls somewhere in that fence to make it easy to push, it's okay. And I'm only off by like a degree or so. I mean, at the length of this fence, I'm off by 
64th of an inch. Enough I can hold it up to the light and see it, so. Not enough to worry at all. <laughs> so, um, there. Next thing I need to do is I need a way to lock this so that it stays at one particular place all the way along this. Ooh. Now I do need to clean. Let's clean this, the, the extra epoxy off the top because that's what's rubbing on it right now. So now, I clamp it back in here and come back with that file. I still had a little bit of that tacky epoxy on there. So I didn't have enough time to let it sit. Did you want to switch cameras, James? What's that? Did you want to switch? I guess I can. Have you ever seen the the, uh, the video of how to train your husband? <laughs> no. no. What was the name of the video? When a man answers. When a man answers. Yes. There you go. And she whistles for me. I wonder why. That video is like what from the fifties? Something like that. Yeah. Really good video. Make sure I get it nice and clean. Draw filing. So, because there it's brass, you would want to use the file and not a plane? Oh, uh, I can use a plane, yes. Um, the, a plane will take shavings. The problem with a plane is that you run the risk of chipping the blade. It will do it. Um, but if you come to a too fine a point, if you sharpen your blade to 25 degrees, it'll chip it, no problem. If you sharpen it to 35 degrees, it'll probably work. If you sharpen it to 40 degrees, you probably won't have any problem at all. Um, so, yes, you can do it with a plane, um, but a file I find to just be a little bit easier. Here we go. So um, now we need to lock this onto that. And I could do that with a wedge and cut out a little space up in here for a wedge to fit in there. Um, I've just never much cared for wedges on marking gauges. Um, personal choice, but I don't, I don't like it that much. Um, what I do want to do is come in and I'm going to make that mark again at three and a half, because I need to know where is the, the center of this so I can put a screw hole down in the top center. So I'm going to mark this again and make sure my mark is indeed halfway. And I'm going to transfer that up to here. Just a tick of a mark at the top of the octagon. Um, And so what that will allow me to do is grab my square and my knife, which is here. Starting to get to the point where things are cluttering up on there. And I can put that into there. And I can draw this up and put a slight nick up on this corner. Bring this up onto here, a slight nick in here. Draw a line across there. I'm gonna put this into the vise. I'm gonna set my marking gauge to half inch. This is one inch thick-ish. And we'll mark across that. And across that. And there is my center point so that I can put in that. So that's where I need to drill the hole. Now at this point, um, you have a bunch of different options. Um, you could put in a thread, um, a th a threaded insert, um, and to do that you drill the hole that the threaded insert fits into, and then you, you only drill that down in the depth of your threaded insert, you put in your threaded, or you don't put in threaded, <sighs> drill a hole that your threaded insert is designed for, but only drill it down the depth of your threaded insert. Then before putting the threaded insert in, then you drill a hole in the middle of that that is slightly larger than your set screw, and for this I'm using a quarter twenty um, inch and a quarter set screw make sure my inch and a quarter will actually drop on the floor, like everything else. Perfect. So what I've got this here is I designed it so that there would be about an inch and a quarter of meat on top. So if it comes down, it's pushing into that and just barely touching this. If I need some more space, I can take a couple shavings off of here and make sure I drop another tool on the floor. <laughs> um, so you can, um, put in a thread insert. But recently I've been playing with um, compression taps. 
Um, and I have really, really been liking them. So for this one, I'm not going to use a threaded insert. I'm going to use a tap, which is, I got to okay, do some cleanup here because I can't find things. <laughs> Any questions? Ah, uh, no. Okay. Now this is one of the, at some point in every build, the place gets so cluttered that you have to take a second and clean. I think I'll put that up a little later. And so I'm going to put away the tools that I probably will not be using, which means I'm going to definitely be using them. <laughs> and look for, there it is. So slide these things over, get them out of the way. So I'll probably still be using those. Um, I have, this tap is what, uh, what does they call it? They call it a forming tap. Um, and it doesn't actually cut the threads, it presses them to the side. And for metal, that is phenomenal. It's fast, it's easy, you can just run it in with a power drill, run it out, it's very, very efficient. Um, for wood, the added benefit is that it, um, the, the threads will slowly contract, uh, will um, not contract, they'll slowly try to come back to their normal size. And so they'll actually put a bit of pressure on the screw. So you get a really nice tight fit in the screw. Um, and I've found in the ones that I've tried so far for long-term use, so far they've been pretty good. Now I do want to actually do a, a, a full test on this at some point. I um, haven't quite gotten there yet, but this is what I want to use. Um, the problem is I need to remember what size drill bit I need to use for this because it's a weird one. As you see... This one doesn't list it. Does it list it on there? Otherwise, I'm going to guess at it and test it. Nope, that one's not going to list it on that one. So, um, you want a drill bit that is smaller than the tap, but you don't want it um, as small as you would want for a cutting bit because this will actually displace the material. So, some of the material that would normally be cut out and removed is now pushed into the parts of the thread that stick out into the opening. Um, so let's see, quarter inch is there, and I want to come down to, I'm going to try 1364th, and I want to say it's 730 seconds. So we're going to try this, and I am going to be using the drill for this. Why? Because I want to. And as always, whenever you're making a precision hole, don't drill it on the actual thing, do some tests. And I'm going to grab another piece of oak, so I know it's very, very similar, about an inch thick on here, and I'm going to drill a hole. Nothing special. I'm going to put this tap in. Here, I'll give you a close-up and show you what this looks like, because it looks a little bit different. There we go. Three. There you go. So it looks kind of like a screw, except for there are bits, there are bumps in there that make it compress just a little bit easier. And you can actually just use a screw to do it as long as um, it, you kind of taper the tip so it runs in. Let's see how that feels. There it is. That's a little bit on the tight side for this thumb screw. So what brand are you, I mean, like, are there, is there a specific brand? This is one I just bought on McMaster. I think I put tip links to it in the final video of this. Uh, oh, I didn't. I'll do it. No, it's, um, if you look up um, McMaster, there are, you can buy it on Amazon, but I haven't tried any of those yet, and it's called a forming tap. Um, forming tap. So, I actually want a 730 seconds. Let's try a 730 seconds. Do I have a 730 seconds? It's missing out of that set. Of course it's missing out of that set, isn't it? Quarter, quarter, 1564. Uh, 730 seconds. Hey, look at that. 
let's try this one. Let's put back the other bit first. And normally I would go with the directions. Actually, no, that one doesn't go in there. That goes in here. Where's the one I was just using? There it is. Um, and if you look them up online, it'll say use this particular size, but that is for metal. Um, and I found that they're a little bit finicky for wood, so I like to go um, up one size for wood. Let's see what this one does. Like how easy they are to run in and out. It's just phenomenal. So in this case, easy, easy, easy so far. Can I run it all the way through an inch and still have that good friction I'm looking for? Almost there, almost there. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I have a question when you're ready for one. What's that? Ian McCulloch asked, does it make a difference if you're using that forming tap in the end of the board with the grain rather than through the board across the grain? Or is that something to be tested? For that is something to be tested. I have a whole <laughs> bunch of tests I want to do. I want to put the screws in and out. And my one fear with using um, wood in there, it, wood, wood threads are phenomenal. They actually work really, really well. They have an incredible amount of strength. And I found the forming tap actually gives it a little bit more strength than normal cutting thread. Um, however, um, the one downside to them is they don't last quite as long. They tend to wear out a little bit faster. Um, but I've never actually tried the wear out with a forming tap. I've just tried it with the cutting threads. And so I want to actually do that test. And that sounds like a really good spreadsheet I'll do sometime in the future. <laughs> I just haven't gotten there yet. I want to lift it up so I can see where I'm going. And back to you. So now, let's make this thing vertical. I keep going in the look from a different direction. There we go. Now, forming tap. This one will work. And I want to see if I need to plane off a little bit on the surface. So it should be sticking out a little bit on the inside here. But it's not sticking out quite as much as I want. It's sticking out 16th of an inch. I want to get a good eighth of an inch. So I'm going to plane a sixteenth of an inch off of this surface and that will let me know that I'm where I want to be. And then once we have that, uh, we, need to do a, we need to do all the finish work on it and then we can put the pin in it to actually make it work. And some people like to use a knife, some people like to use a, um, put that down so you can see, um, a yelling child upstairs. <laughs> Someone's getting excited about a video game. Um, some people like a knife, some people like a, a standard point. I actually usually like a point. Um, so I'll show you a couple different ways of doing that. Love making curls. So when you're 
saying you're going to take it down mm -hmm. sixteenths of an inch. Do you know roughly for you, like how many swipes that is? And you just um, count? I'm theoretically taking off a little less than a hundredth of an inch, so uh, sixteen hundredths, eight passes, a uh, dozen or so. What I'm saying is, like in your head, you're like, I roughly no, know no, I I'm need, just, or you just go I, to you. It just feels like, yeah, it feels about right. In this case, um, I've got about an eighteenth inch sticking switch out. Switch your there. camera. Oop. Why doesn't it automatically switch for me? <laughs> got about an eighth inch or so sticking out in the middle. So let's give that a try. You're just so methodical about everything else. I thought maybe you're like. And here. So it's just tapping out, and I've got that much left to go still. So let's actually back it up a little bit. Let's stick this in. That's the tight end. And now I can tighten down on that brass wear strip, and that is locked in place. Happy. I like that. That makes me pleased. There we go. Thumb screw. So, um, the last things we need to do for this to be functional is to put a pin into the cutting end. Put a pin into the cutting end. Um, I'm going to talk through a couple of ways to do that, but before we do that, uh, while we get that ready, I'm actually going to put a little bit of finish on this. Oh, wait, no, we've got to detail this up still first. Um, so I've got to do some cleanup on this. Um, and I'm going to do some chamfering on the surfaces. I'm going to put some boiled linseed oil on them. Um, and then we'll put the, the cutting pin on the end. Um, so if anyone has questions now would be a good time to do it. So no carving this time. What's that? No carving. Um, probably not. We're running pretty cluttered in time. I was hoping to get it done before noon. Otherwise my kids get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so I need this the brass is sticking up just a little bit. And I'm actually going to use my more aggressive file. And I know this one doesn't have a handle on it. Oh no, I'm going to kill myself. Come to the point where you feel it. Can you focus it? Hitting the wood. On. It focused? There you go. One end. Now let's do the other end. This is the point at which projects really get exciting. You're getting close to that end. And this is the where problems come up and you accidentally run past something and oops, <laughs> that doesn't look so good. So take your time, do it right. I also have a couple of those screws that are left up a little bit. So I'm going to grab a different file for that. No file here. I'm going to come in and I'm going to go until that's gone. Go and tell. Ow! Mm. That's gonna hurt. Just jabbed it right into the sharp end of the brass. There we go. That one's flush, that one's flush. A little bit of epoxy sticking up here. over some of these brass corners. Do this surface. So come in here. It's amazing what you can clean up with a file on surface. Uh, I need a card file again. A little clogged. Okay. Um, all surfaces on that. Cool. 
Now let's do some little chamfering on this. For that, grab a block plane. And I'm not going to do terribly heavy chamfering on it. Just like four or five passes on each edge. Sometimes it's easier to clamp them in here, particularly for the corners, is I can come in like this. And then on these ones, I'm going to need to file them. Because with that low angle, with the low angle on that block plane, I'm going to chip it out no matter what I do. So I can't, I can't plane with the block plane. I can't plane brass with the block plane. I'm going to chamfer that brass corner in. That way it doesn't scratch anything as it's going through. And then one more here. Then I can come in with this and not hit the brass. Just get the last bit of wood there. Corner on here. Corner around here. Really like that simple finishing on there. Just makes it look really, really nice. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five ish. Do one more on there. Do this corner. So, you talked about earlier about a giveaway. Ah, oh, yeah, we should do a giveaway here. Well, yeah, I need to do a live giveaway here. Um, I'm going to give away either my original panel gauge um, or this one, and I will let your choice of which one you want for the winner of it. <sighs> we need to do something for it, though. Hmm. I don't know, questions from the audience. What do you guys think I should do for it? Let's get some people involved here. Um, normally I have a question, answer something about the Wood by Wright shop. Um, Trying to come up with a good question for that. that. So that's all chamfered. That is not yet chamfered. I'm going to do a little bit on the corners of this because I just don't like it to be absolutely square up at the top of the octagon. Um, and so for this I'm going to come in with this file. I find small faces like this it's actually a little faster to just do them with the file. Put a little bit of detail on there. I would say, like, what was your favorite cartoon character growing up? But I don't know that I know your favorite cartoon character. Um, yeah. I mean, there, I have an easier one. What's that? Our anniversary. Not the year, just the date. That's not something you talk about a lot. Unless it's something you want to talk about a lot in the life that they should know about you. No, I'm thinking something about the channel. Something that, Some of the channel. <laughs> something that someone has been watching for a long time would know. Someone's going to suggest something that they know the answer to. <laughs> I have one. What's that? Well, if I say it, then they're going to start guessing. Well, if I do or I don't, I mean, uh... what your little thingy is called. My little thingy? Yeah, the thingy. The button thingy. Oh. Ah, oh, that's a really good one. I like that. Okay, guys. What is this called? Do you, do you know the term? I'm pretty sure I do. 
Okay. Does James use a blade or a pin? In the panel gauge? I'm going to be using a pin on this, and I'll talk okay, about that. Okay, so we're later. live. They can answer this yeah, question. Yeah. So now. first person <laughs> to tell me what that is. You have to answer both things. Oh, both things. You have to answer what it is and where it came from. So if you can do that, you have been watching this channel for a while. So I've answered that one four or five times in lives in the past. I would also accept why it's on the wall for where it came from, because it's kind of the same thing. You know that, right? I should know that one. Good, yeah. So I'll let you watch that. Um, then I'm going to need, before we do finish, I'm going to uh, hit it with some 400 grit sandpaper. Um, not because I need, actually, I'm going to see, I'm just going to use a sanding block for this one. So I have a, a 300 grit foam sanding block. That'll work just as well. Um, what that'll do is it kind of roughs up the surface a little bit, but the roughness isn't what matters. It's that it clogs the pores with dust. And that will actually wick the uh, oil into it a little bit deeper. Okay. Hang on. I want to double check something. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's the first half of it, yes. Yes. Well, if they can get that part. Uh, no I mean, if someone gives me that and we don't get anything else by the end of this, then that person will win. There is a particular name. Yes. Ooh, I got a little chip out here. I'll catch on the finish. Little defect. Oh well. Um, do the ends of this. And then we're going to finish this with a high class, high poly finish. No. <laughs> Boil and seal and paste wax. Uh, now, for the um, putting the cutting edge on it, I could put a knife on there. I don't like knives so much, though. Um, I, I, tr I mean, I've got all of these marking gauges. I've got knives. I've got rolling wheels. I've got a whole bunch of them. My favorites are the simple cutting points. Um, focus in on this. I like those points. They don't follow the grain quite as much. They cut nicely. They give you a nice mark. Um, and I really, really like those. Um, so, the problem with them is I don't like it when it's just a steel rod that gets drowned, driven down through there. I actually prefer to use a screw. Um, and so in this case, I have the problem if we've got the brass in there. And I need to work around that. Um, actually, let me go ahead and put the finish on this first, get that chance to soak in. I have a question for you. What's that? Daniel wants to know, is that a sanding sponge? Yes, uh, 300 grit sanding sponge. Uh, normally, I use 400 grit sandpaper. Um, but it was a little buried, so the 300 grit will work fine. Just doing a few quick passes on it, make sure it feels good to the hand, and clog all the pores with oil, with, uh, with sawdust, there we are. And the uh, bottle of oil that uh, is just as old as this channel. <laughs> okay, hang on. Switch Homemade your boiled linseed oil. Switch your camera. Oh, I thought I did. There we go. Homemade bowl lens it all. You're still not out of that stuff yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, I keep making it. <laughs> I've refilled this jar, I don't know how many times. Oh, okay. I was like, you use it in everything. Mm -hmm. But for hand tools, where I'm going to be sliding my hand on it and feeling it, this is the finish I like. It just feels so good in the hand. Um, you can actually feel the wood, the grain, nothing. Nothing to stop it. So I'll put that on, let it soak for a minute, set that aside. Grab this one. Now this is red oak, so it's not going to be popping out that much. Man, that takes me back to when we started dating. Because everything y'all made was red oak. Well, yeah, my, well, that's because I only had access to red oak. I know. My dad is in love with red oak, like I'm in, red, in love with white oak. And so growing up, everything we made in the shop was red oak. Um, it's relatively affordable, so it's kind of nice. And so what I normally do, so I'm going to set these aside for 15 minutes or so, and I'm going to come back and add more. Set them aside for 15 minutes, and I'll come back and add more um, until they stop soaking it up. 
Um, and then at that point, um, I'll wipe off any of the excess and I'll apply paste wax. I let the paste wax then sit for half an hour, hour or so, and then I'll come back and polish the paste wax off. Um, however, in this case, a little pushed for time. So I'm going to do all of that off camera because I don't think you want me just running the camera for another hour and a half. I'm going to do that later. So I'm going to wipe off the excess right now and I will put on um, the rest of it later. Let it fully soak on. But this will at least let you see what it looks like. And what do you do with, with rags? You lay them out flat on the floor and let them dry. Um, or if you have a place to burn them, burn them! Um, ow, splinter. I thought I got all those. Mm, didn't get that one. Oh, that's why I'm going against the grain on that side. Let's go with the grain on that. I got these towels, and I, I usually get the regular shop towels. Um, these ones are cloth like rags, and I don't like them. So I'm trying to use them up. They, they catch far more on any bit of grain going the wrong direction. So there's that. Now we need to put a pin into this because if you like it, then you should have put a pin in it. Is anyone getting close to that? Uh, uh, eh, no one's gotten the exact name. Everyone's telling me what it does or what's on it. Yeah. I'm not asking about the buttons and switches. I'm asking about what is, what is this whole gray thing called? And uh, yeah. They're gonna, some of them are going to kick themselves because they know they know the answer to yeah. this. They need to go back on a, like a Q&A live to find <laughs> that question. I have a question from the chat, though. What's that? Um, Broccoli again asked, what, would that finish be okay for a writing desk or would it rub off or stain stuff? Um, for desks, tables, and things that are going to see a lot of wear, I don't like a boiled in pseudo paste wax. It's not a durable finish. It's not something that's going to protect it from spills and dings and things like that. Um, it's something that adds color. It stops waxes and oils from your hands. Um, makes it ever so slightly water resistant. Um, but it's not going to stop a coffee stain. Um, for something like that, you need a film finish, such as a poly, um, which is my... Um, common favorite. Um, Rubio Monocoat is my new favorite. I use that one all the time. Um, yeah, you need, a, you need a film finish if you're doing something like that. So my two go-tos are boiled linseed, oil, hand, boiled linseed oil and paste wax for things that go in my hand at my shop, things that I'm regularly um, feeling up. <laughs> Put it all over my wife. Um, I thought we would get through one show. <laughs> Trying to you have been naughty screws. lately. Oh, I, I put them back. Um, but uh. for furniture, I usually use Rubio Monaco. It is my, my go-to finish for that. There they are. Okay, so for the pin, I actually like to use um, screws rather than a nail. Um, and this gives me a micro adjustment so I can move them in and out. The problem with that is I have this brass rod on there I have to drill through. So I need a hole in the brass that is bigger than um, these. So the screw that I'm going to be using is actually, um, <laughs> it's actually a, a Craig jig screw. Um, and I like this with the, the button head. I'm going to leave this sticking up a little bit so that I can adjust it and move it down in the future. But this head is very easy to file down in the shape I want. So I need to find out the total size of these threads, which is 0.1. Six five. So I need a, a drill bit that is bigger than 0.165. Um, where'd my drill bits go? There they are. Which means probably want something around what three sixteenths? Three sixteenths. And I need a tool that dropped on the floor. So I'm going to take this and put a divot in here. I'm going to come in um, about three quarter inch from the end. Um, the actual spacing on the end of this really does not matter. I just need to be in the center of the brass, come into around there, and go crunk. And then we can put this in here, and I'm going to drill through the brass with this head. Um, take this off. So put that little divot in there. Uh, 
glue that back down. We'll do that later. Oil's still a little bit wet, so it's sticking to that. Yeah, I popped off that little last piece, so glue isn't fully set there yet. Oh well. We can reapply that later. We have the technology. Now, I need to drill a hole that is about the size of the inside of these threads, which is 0.1. Um, I don't think I have one of these bits that's 0.1. But it can't. It has to be somewhere between 0.1 and 0.6. So I could get away with like uh, 0 0.10. What is the shank back here? 0.11 would be perfect. 0.15 would be great. 0.135. You're a bit too big. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me move to this one. I've got like six sets of bits, all with different characteristics and types. These are my number bits. Which that one goes into. Uh, let's see, point one one would be smaller than that. <laughs> I could pull out my chart and find out what it is. There we go. It's a number 33. I should know that one. And now we're going to drill all the way through. Making sure we're set. Oops. Okay. Now with that out of the way, we can drive in our tip. Um, and I have a. Do I have a? Oh, it's upstairs, isn't it? Yeah, it's upstairs. This is a Robertson's. And my Robertson number two driver is, of course, in the garage, but I think I have another one over here. Is anyone getting it? No. Nope. Uh, has anyone guessed Although, where it's from? Although, this might be kind of mean, because we're probably... Has anyone guessed where it's from? What the, what the, the background was that I got it from? I... I don't think so if it's what I'm thinking. You might want to peek real quick. Because I think I remember what it's from. Power switch. I'm not asking what's it stopping, but what the, the industry was I was in where I got it. Does that answer your question? Well, I... Right, well, let me talk I think this. someone's gotten close, but I don't think well, it... Well, give that's... me a hint. Which one do you think was close? I'll let you know. Um, Sean O'Neill, the first one. And not, I can't not necessarily far. the specific, but where, but I don't, still, I don't even think that's accurately where you used it. A curtain buzz? Is that what you said? No, 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 no. The second half of the answer. I, I, I can't read up that far. Oh, with sight and sound, but I don't think that's correct. Uh, no, not sight and sound. But, but theater is, they're on the right track. He's on the okay, right CJ, track. Okay, CJ, you're the closest so far. I mean, but Sean and he'll put theater in the answer. So, I mean, they're... Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, but it's not the correct theater. Oh, sight and sound <laughs> theater, yeah. Theater tech, yes. So, what, what is it called in theater tech? Okay, so one of the things that I love about having this bit, uh, having this screw on here, is that I can extend it out a long ways. And then with it out a long ways, I can come in with a file and I can shape it down. And I actually want it to be kind of a spearhead. So it's halfway between a knife and a point. That side and So imagine like an arrowhead or a spearhead right there. And then I can back it up to exactly the depth that I want, which is really only sticking out about an eighth inch or so. And I can align it the direction that I want it to be. And now that is set up just the way I want it to be. So I can put this in, making sure that this fence is toward it. Slide that all the way down. And then we can put in the screw, 
and like that, we have a marking gauge ready to work. Except for I need to finish up the finish and then put that little piece back in there. <laughs> it's kind of sad that it popped out like that. Oh well, I will fix that. We can repair it. We have the technology. Uh, there we go. Up, 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 up. There we go. So there is the marking gauge. Just like that. A lot of fun. This is up a little bit. And we can set this to wherever we want. Actually, I'm going to clean this up and show you what a marking gauge does. It drops Whoa. tool. Can we repeat the question? What is that button called? What is this? Called? Not the button, but not this the whole button, thing. Not the button, the entire thing. What is this thing called in a theater? I might have to change up that question here. <laughs> well, I have a really good hint to go with it. Uh, at this point, go ahead and throw the hint. The hint. Think food. Mm. My hint would be far more obvious. Well, I was trying to see if that, anyone would I always give like. obvious hints. If I give a hint, it's instantly known. <laughs> so, um, imagine, oh, here, let me grab an actual panel. Oh, I threw that one out. I just cleaned out the shop. What did you throw out? Um, a panel that I had that would have been perfect. Oh. Here. I've got a piece of laminated maple. So if I want to rip this down to, say, six inches, I can then set this to, say, six inches from that fence. And the nice thing about this is that fence now rides on the edge here. So it kind of registers in there and my hand can come out halfway here and I can use this to then mark a really nice line. And that's even going across the grain. 90% of the time with a panel gauge you're actually going with the grain so it would be something more like this. But the thing with a panel gauge is six inches you could do with a marking gauge. With a panel gauge, you could go out to almost two feet, because I made this beam almost two feet. Now at this point though, I need something to hold this in place, otherwise it's going to wiggle around. So I'm going to kind of, actually let me just go ahead and do that. I need a third hand, or a fourth hand, or maybe a fifth hand at this point. Do you like some help? Always, that's why I married you. Um, and with this, now, at this point, I want to have a hand back Oh, there we go. I want to have a hand back here and a hand up here. And sometimes you'll even see these with a pistol grip, just like you'd see on a plane. But I can come in this way, and with these, now I can make a mark that is in that distance right on. So, panel gauge. It is a very useful tool if you find yourself doing large pieces, um, though it's one I don't use all that often. Did anyone get it? Not yet. Tomatoes. Alex is. Oh, I'm yeah, Alex Adams. No. Oh, no, no, it's not. Never mind. It's not. He's going to kick himself because him, they're like, we're getting close. <laughs> Ooh. It is my son's Ooh, favorite. We're getting food. close. My son's Here, Alex got hey. it. <laughs> AT Woodwork. What are Alex? Nice work. It came like milliseconds. Cucumber pickle, yes. <laughs> it is a pickle. Um, in theater, it's called a, a pickle or a control pickle. Um, but yes, my background is theater work, and so that's why it's here. It's not hanging on it. It's not attached to anything. It's just a wire going to nowhere, but uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so Alex, let me know uh -huh. which one of these two you want, and I'll send you one. Um, so yeah, this is our live. Um, I hope you liked it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know those in the future, or put this in the, the, the comments. Uh, if you are watching this recorded all the way through to this point, please let me know in the comments, because I'd be very fascinated to find out if someone actually decided to watch this all the way through recorded which would be very interesting. So uh, thank you to everyone who's still here. And uh, yeah, um, I feel like I'm forgetting something because at this point I gotta be forgetting something. Am I? I don't think so. So yeah, panel gauge, hope you like it. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Three hours of fun. <laughs>